Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line. For buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly for pricing at tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a long-running classic that has been in the Breguet catalog since 2006. 38 millimeters in diameter in white gold. This is the Breguet Classique 5177. Now, the timepiece is beautifully proportioned and timeless in its appeal. This could have been designed this year and it would look equally up to date. 38 in diameter, it's 8.9 millimeters thick and a wonderfully compact 46.1 millimeters from lug to lug with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. A lot of the watches from the 2000s that have aged best are watches like this that were constructed with classical size and proportions. The oversized era of the 2000s really had no impact on the classique collection at Breguet, which remained overwhelmingly tasteful. And you can see this is wonderfully tasteful on my wrist. You can actually wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. And I would say even smaller would be possible if it weren't for the really straight profile of the lugs. They do thrust outward and cause the watch to wear a bit larger than a 46 millimeter lug to lug would suggest. So 14 centimeter circumference wrists are larger, again, minus 16. And you can see that it is super flat, no trouble fitting underneath the dress cuff here, the consummate dress watch. We have large rectangular scale alligator leather, black semi-gloss. We've got a folded edge, a monotone stitch on the bottom calfskin, Breguet factory strap, no crimping, no gouging, brand new, a pin buckle in white gold. And of course, this is a matching component for the Breguet watch. You can also see that the case is way upscale. First, take a look at the strap. You could see that screws and bars are used to retain the strap. No spring bars here. Screws and bars more expensive to craft, but also more secure than spring bars. You can also see that the lugs are welded on. So the case and lugs made separately, the lugs inserted into slots in the case, welded on, and then all evidence of the weld removed by hand to create this sharp break. The case is also cold rolled to create this coining and then hand finished to clean it up. So this is an extensively hand finished case. Breguet logo on the crown, domed bezel. You can see there's a domed case back, a domed bezel, and there's a flange on each that helps to define the mid case. We have a little bit of a camber to the sapphire on the dial. Guys, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. There is a Breguet secret signature. I'm going to do my best. It's, it's right underneath where the bob of the second hand is right now, and it's literally right underneath my thumb. It's there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but rest assured, even though this is a Grand Faux enamel dial, there is a secret signature just below the hands that says Breguet. Now, the rest of the dial is Grand Faux enamel. So, on a solid gold base, vitreous or glass-based paint is applied and fired up to 20 times at 800 degrees Celsius to create a lovely disc of solid glass on a precious metal base. And that is what fired enamel Grand Faux is. Fired at 800 degrees Celsius dozens of times and hand finished through each stage to create a mirror-like profile. Though if you get very close to enamel, you can see it's got a little bit of orange peel rippling. And that's the difference between enamel and something mass produced like say a machine applied lacquer. Lacquer is mirror smooth. This has a little bit of texture. You can also see we have classical Breguet hands. The real deal too. Fired blue, not dyed, and steel fired blue. You can also see they are Breguet style. And there is a Breguet style counterweight to the Lancet style seconds hand. We have lovely Breguet style numerals. These are pre Art Deco. And you can see that we have these little star indices that help you mark the seconds and the minutes. And there is a little differential index outboard of each hour along the way. Now, the watch has a faceted slope down through the dial to the date disc, and that's in good taste. A Breguet could have cut a sheer slot all the way down. Instead, you can see that each facet is sloped slightly to create a more gradual slope down from the dial to the disc. Now, the disc, as you will appreciate, actually has a profile where the inner numerals are tighter than the outer numerals. So you can see when operating the quick set in particular, let me grab the quick set right there, that it is easy to see how the numerals are larger outboard 
in order to fit the particular shape of the date window. So you can see we have a quick set function. We also have a hacking seconds function to set the watch against a reference time. On the reverse, we have Breguet, exclusive caliber 777. This was designed by Lamagna for Breguet. Uh, Lamagna is now manufacture Breguet. They've been fully integrated, although they've had a relationship since at least the 1980s. So this is considered an in-house movement and part of a long tradition of Le Magne and Breguet working hand in hand. Now it's the 777Q, Q for Cantiem. It does have a calendar. You can see that we have a white gold rotor that's been cut on a rose lathe with a wonderful rayon pattern. And it's a combination of beveling, the rayon, and then you can see satination and engraving of the Breguet name. We have black polished screws here on this movement with chamfered slots and circumference, same as you'll find on Patek Vacheron and other haute de gamme models. The ball bearing at center has a solarized radial grain emanating out from the center. We have lovely stripes or Cote de Genève laid down by abrasive wheel across the surface of the bridges. You can also see the use of micro perlage on some of the recesses of the bridges. Also note the use of solarization on the mainspring barrel. It's an automatic winder. It has a 55 hour power reserve. We'll talk about some of the tech specs here. It's adjusted in six positions, which is one more than a standard chronometer. It pivots on 26 joules. It has a free sprung balance for durability as well as precision of adjustment. It has a silicon escapement for reduced friction and reduced need for lubrication. And it has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. You can also see that it has a recessed bolt aerodynamic free sprung balance. So a lot of refinement here, even though the watch is very classically styled on the back, you can see it is all up to the minute. Now there's more going on too. It beats away at 4 hertz, so it's a modern beat rate, and you can see that the mirrored anglage is world class here. They've applied the same treatment as you could see to the jewel countersinks uh, with a beveled polish, a partridge eye effect. And you can also see there's plenty of black polished, for example, the screw heads, the stud holder, the root of the regulator, and then you can see adjacent to the balance there are two sharp inward angles where bevels meet. That is very difficult to achieve from a finishing standpoint. You can also see outward angles where bevels come to a point just as difficult to achieve as inward angles. And then we have satination on all the wheels. It is a great looking movement, this caliber 777Q. And the watch has a 30 meter water resistance, which is dress watch appropriate. Dial, case, movement, all of this is handcrafted. Breguet, an extraordinary value in autologerie. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.